All right, guys, another field trip today. So this property that I'm gonna show you uh, sold at a foreclosure auction and generated $116,000 in surplus funds. Okay, so it's actually this property right here. Where they're working on the yard right there. So that house. So that house right there, six figure overage, right? Could not find the owner. Uh, couldn't get a hold of them on the phone. No luck getting a hold of them via text. Um, couldn't find them. So what I ended up doing is I actually drove up here to knock on the door. And um, by the time I got up here, the house was vacant. So nobody was living there anymore. So that was kind of a waste, right? Uh, knocked on the door, house was vacant, couldn't find the owner. Not much luck, right? Well, in this particular instance, you want to pay attention, guys, when you're, here's a little tip for you, when you're skip tracing people, you want to also get a hold of all of their last known addresses, okay? Or where they may potentially be living now. Okay, and you can do that via skip trace softwares, but another tip that I can give you is search their name in the county re recorder's office, okay, online to see if they own other properties, okay? It's kind of a long shot, but it it's very important, and I'll tell you why. So I actually did that with this gentleman searched his name and he actually owned multiple properties uh, he had a couple of rentals in the area and that's actually how i found him because when i went to that address and found that it was vacant i had i think two or three other addresses of properties to go and visit okay so i went to one it was probably about a mile away drove over to that uh you know that rental or that he owned and um, knocked on the door, no luck. Nobody answered, waste of time. And then what I ended up doing is going to a second property, okay? And that property was actually just around the corner from the house that I just showed you. And knocked on that door and found the guy that I was looking for, okay? So I don't know if he still lives here or not, but this is the house right here, okay? So you can see it, this house right here. So I knocked on that door right there that you see on the front porch and I got a hold of the owner. Was able to have a conversation with him face to face. Had my paperwork ready to go, nice little folder, was looking all professional and um, told me he wasn't interested. <laughs> I was like, dang, okay, well, he said he had done evictions and he knew the court system that he would do it himself. Fair enough, okay? So I left, tell between my legs, drove the two hours back home and uh, nothing happened. So what I ended up doing is I continued to monitor the case, right? I'm gonna do a U-turn here. I continued to monitor the case, okay? and see if a claim got filed. A couple weeks go by, three weeks go by, four weeks go by, no claim filed. More time goes by, a judge enters an order saying, hey, we're going to dismiss the case and send the money to the state. So now I'm like, dude, this, this, this guy's gonna lose his money. Drive up here a second time, talk to him again. I probably drove up here maybe two or three times because the, in my early days too, I was just looking to, I was just hustling to get whatever deals I could. And I probably talked to him a couple times and every time he was like, no, I'm good. Thank you. I appreciate you. He's very nice, but he just was not interested. Long story short, that money never got claimed, at least in the court system. The money did get transferred to the state unclaimed property. I don't know if he ever claimed it. That's the end of the story. <laughs>
it sucks, right? Like, I don't know if he ever got his money. I don't know if he ever filed a claim with the state. I kept checking the state and never saw his name. So maybe he did, but maybe he didn't. And the state just took the money, put it into their slush fund. I don't know what happened to that money. All I know is it transferred from the court to the state and that was the end of the story. I never saw him file a claim for it. And that happens more often than you'd think. People know they have money or some oftentimes they don't know until we tell them. But even when they do know, sometimes they don't file a claim. It's part of the business. Sometimes people don't know and then you let them know and they'll do it without you. Guys, that's part of the that's part of the game. Okay. You have to accept that. That is okay. Um, just because we let somebody know that they had funds coming to them doesn't mean we're entitled to it. Um, it's still their money, right? All we can do in this business is simply offer our services and educate them on why it may be beneficial for them to hire a company like us. That's all we can do. Uh, if you're not okay with that, right? Like if you're not okay losing out on some deals or putting in work, how's it going? Um, you know, putting in some work that you might not get paid on probably isn't a good fit for you. Not a good business, right? But that's how any business is. Like every time you try to offer something for somebody to buy, it doesn't mean they're going to buy it. They may or they may not. It's their decision. Um, the good news is, if somebody says no today, there's going to be another auction tomorrow. There's going to be a new surplus funds deal or a new overage to pursue tomorrow. So your pipeline, there's every day new leads are getting created for you to pursue. So that's the good news. Bad news is not everyone's going to accept your offer, even if you get a hold of them. Some people you're not even going to get a hold of. Some people you're not ever going to find. And that's why this business, and for these reasons, guys, this business is tough. It's a tough business, but it can be very rewarding, can be very lucrative. At least it has been in my instance and in my experience. But um, I hope that case study was helpful for you. If you have questions, post them down below, and I'll talk to you later.